Where are we? Okay. We are here. We are here. This is the bridge. So let's turn that a bit. Um, there's the river. There's this bridge here. The bridge has existed for 1200 years. There's a new bridge, a new road bridge here, about one kilometer to the west, which was opened, which was built about five years ago. There's another new bridge here, which was built about 25 years ago. But until 25 years ago, the only road bridge for 700 years was this bridge here, this bridge here. And before that, the Ford was here. Now, when the railways were built, the first railway line is the only one surviving, this one from Exeter, which opened in 1854. And the railway station here was opened in 1854 also. And then the railway line also continued later in the late 1950s, like that, with a railway bridge curving the river. And it came up here to another railway station there. And then it continued along here um, to the northwest. Um, and so this was the railway line coming up from Exeter. Um, and then another railway line was built uh, going back here. There it is there. The railway, this is the second railway bridge. And a railway line came round like this. And, uh, oops, sorry, gone a bit wrong there. Came up to here to another railway station that opened in the 1860s and that took a railway line out on this route here, which is now a road, but it used to be a railway line, to the east. Let me take my foot hat on. So this is to the east. This is to the south uh, east. Um, this is to the north west. Um, then another railway line was built from here that went to the southwest, west and then south, down that way. Um, to the southwest, uh, and then much later in 1898, another railway line was built coming in here. Uh, where's it gone? Um, to see. But it comes. It comes in about like that. Um, uh, is that right? No. Sorry. Whoops. Comes in like that. Um, and it couldn't reach this railway station, so they demolished that railway station, they took it away, and they built a new railway station for these two lines there. So there's a railway station there, there, and there, and later there, there, and there, and not there. So three railway stations, four in total, but three at any one time. A railway line here to the northwest, sorry, to the northeast. That's the one to Linton. To Linton, which opened in 1898. This one in 18. 54, these ones between 1856 and 1862, um, and the reason is because this is a tidal river and it was difficult, in fact we have not, even in modern technology, even in the 21st century, there are no other bridges all the way from here to the sea, and Barnstable is 10 kilometres from the sea, there are no other bridges all the way down here, if you stand here and you want to cross to there, even though it's only 500 metres, you've got to drive for 10 kilometres to Barnstable, cross the bridge, 10, 10, sorry, more than that, um, 9 miles, what's that, 16 kilometres to Biddeford, and then about another 4 kilometres over to here. So a long journey all the way around just to cross that bit, because the only bridge is Barnstable, and there's another bridge at Biddeford, but no bridges between. So Barnstable has controlled the railway network and the road network. The two, the two rival towns, uh, 200, 200 years ago, the two main towns of North Devon were Barnstable, Barnstable and Biddeford. Biddeford means by the fort, the town by the fort. It's also on an, another river. This is the river Torridge, Torrington. This is the river Tor Torridge and this is the river Tor. The two rivers join and flow together into the sea. Because of the great difference in tide, the, town, the towns are a long way upstream where you could ford the river at low tide. But because Barnstable is to the east of Biddeford, and because London and Manchester and Bristol and all the important industries and, and, and services of Great Britain are based to the east, 
then the main road comes to Barnstable first and then goes to Biddeford. And the railways came to Barnstable first and then went to Biddeford. And so whereas 200 years ago the two towns were roughly similar, about the same size and the same power, because Barnstable is further east, everything comes here first and Biddeford becomes a satellite of Barnstable. So all these towns which had their own importance before are now merely much smaller towns. And the main town for North Devon is Barnstable. It's the centre of employment, centre of culture, centre of politics, centre of the law and centre of transport. The railway system of Great Britain was marvellous. I mean, there was a, we still have a very good railway system, but uh, in the, by the mid, by the early 20th century, there were railways everywhere. Tiny villages were connected, it was a wonderful system, but they were making a loss. They were not running at a profit, and there were lots of different rival companies. So eventually, the, the, entire, the entire network of railways in Great Britain were nationalised as British Rail, a national, owned by the government, and the government was responsible for running it. And after a discussion on what to do, they decided to close a lot of the railway lines. So all these railway lines have closed. This, this one closed due to, due to the fact it was not viable. This one closed in 1935, but these two were closed by the government. So was that, because they were not profitable. Um, this is now a cycle path, a, a walking path and a cycle route, which is very nice. So is this. Um, this is now a main road. Uh, this has disappeared altogether, become farmland, and the only surviving link by rail to the rest of Great Britain is from Barnstable to Exeter, which is the main city of, of Devon, and then you can take, go to London. It takes about three, three and a half hours to get to London. But, uh, so the railway system was not profitable by the um, mid or uh, early, I don't know the dates, was it about 1930s? Well, well it was in 1945, wasn't it, was with it? the Labour right. government that it was uh, then nationalised. Nationalised. Oh, right. And then you can tell them why it was privatised. Yeah? Uh, or when? Well, Margaret Thatcher and all that, I mean, the great, the great endeavour, it was a wonderful, you know, it was frightening at the time, but she, she privatised so many industries, but made them competitive. They had to raise the money, raise the finances in the city, they had to prove that they had a business um, uh, to work, uh, and although some of them have a, almost a monopoly, generally they've been broken up in such a way that there is sufficient competition. So privatisation, which was a worrying concept to people who believe in the state uh, and in the community uh, has proved reasonably successful. It's made, <coughs> made things more expensive, but it's made them run better, be more efficient. And if I, I remember the 1970s, when this country was absolutely crippled by national, in, nationalized industries and the, uh, uh, the, uh, and the power of the trade unions who could shut down the railway network, everybody would be stuck they could close down the electricity, they could, they could, you know, everything was uh, under the, uh, well, because the, the state would always pay and the trade unions knew that even if the, the business was unprofitable, the state would pay. So they would have a strike and the state would pay and uh, we would go on making more and more losses. So privatization was a good thing because it made us live in the real world, the real economy, where businesses had to prove that they were viable raise the money themselves uh, but they have the means that the prices and costs of tickets on trains have gone up but people do pay it and people have learnt to live in the real world rather than being supported by the state and looked after by the state so um, although the, our Prime Minister has very strong opinions and past Prime Minister very strong opinions about how we should live our lives. In actual fact, we are a lot freer now than perhaps in the 1970s, where almost everything we did, or everything we relied on, belonged to the state uh, and was uh, mostly unviable and poorly run. Okay? Right. Doubt how it's on the other side of this wall. This is, where, this is the receiving end of the old railway bridge. The railway bridge started over there. Do you see the red traffic lights on the road at the end of the bridge there? See the red traffic lights? Well, uh, to the right of that, where that white notice is, I think it's white notice, is it white notice or whatever? Anyhow, and the, and the little bit of trees, immediately where the, immediately where the bridge adjoins the bank, uh, on this side, you, uh, you can see some trees and bushes, and that is where the railway line started as a railway bridge. And it came across here in a curve uh, and joined here 
and this building here was the first railway station, the town railway station. Um, I can't remember the date, I think it was 1858, but anyhow, there's the, the town railway station here, and then the, the railway line continued along the edge of the river to the northwest. And then later a new railway line was brought in from the northeast, and this railway station was closed down uh, and demolished, and this is a new building built in eight, 1922. Uh, and the, uh, the new railway station is about 150 metres along here. We'll have a, have a look at it in a moment. So the, this was one of the, iron, we call this the Iron Bridge, but in fact, in actual fact there are two Iron Bridges, but this, this one is now gone. This was demolished in 1890. And this is what Tom was talking about. And uh, I used to come along this when I was a child, uh, when we went from Birmingham down to Woolacombe. Um, we used to come over this bridge, which is a very unusual bridge. Um, there's bridge chambers and the sole buildings uh, in the back. And the track used to bend round and uh, there was a railway station just here, which is now a cafe, um, which used to be the bus station as well. Here it is coming up here there uh, that Tom pointed out um, and then a little bit further along um, there's another railway station um, which is uh, which used to be Barnstable Town um, which is now uh, part of a school very interesting to see all the changes <laughs>